I love my wife, Jennifer, with all my heart. We've been together since 2006, both of us in the 10th grade. Like anyone else that's been in a serious relationship, we've had our ups and downs. Nothing has ever seriously threatened our relationship, though. Not until recently, that is. Jen's been... Well, she's been sleepwalking as of late. I know that doesn't sound like a big deal. Hell, a good amount of people sleepwalk. When Jen sleepwalks, though, it's downright creepy. It's almost like she's possessed by something. I know it sounds like I'm being paranoid, but please, hear me out. I don't know exactly what day it was that she started the sleepwalking. It was definitely within the past week. The first night wasn't horrible, a little odd, but nothing you know, too scary. I woke up to the sound of cupboards opening and closing. Not like she got in, grabbed the cup, and then closed it, but just repeatedly opening and closing them. It's like a child slamming the bedroom door while throwing a fit. I looked over my wife's side of the bed and noticed it was empty. Sighed, got out of bed, wiping the sleep from my eyes. Jen, what's going on? I called out as I walked down the hallway. Once I entered the living room, I was able to see the kitchen. And that's when I had my first what-the-hell thought run through my head. She was standing stiff as a board, head staring straight down at the ground. Her right hand was reaching above her head with the cupboard handle, gripping tightly, opening, then closing the door over and over again. Jen, what the hell are you doing? I was baffled. Her sleepwalking hadn't crossed my mind yet. But she didn't stop. She stood in the exact same position, in the exact same rhythm, slamming the door. And after staring at her with wide eyes for a few seconds, my brain finally woke up enough to realize she must have been sleepwalking. I'll admit my heart was racing pretty good. I mean, come on, it, it's in the middle of the night. Pitch black house other than the, the hall light behind me. And I walk out to my wife, standing like a zombie, repeatedly opening and closing a cupboard door. It was kind of a creepy sight to wake up to out of, the, out of a dead sleep. So I shook my head, I chuckled to myself a little, walked over to Jen, placed my hand on her shoulder, and gently guided her away from the kitchen. Thankfully, she didn't resist or anything. She mumbled a couple of incoherent words and allowed me to walk her back to bed. We went back to sleep, and that was that. For, for the first night, anyway. The next day, I told Jen about her little sleepwalking incident. Instead of laughing like I thought she would, her face tensed. She looked very uncomfortable. It's no big deal, babe. At first it did scare the shit out of me, though, I laughed, trying to comfort her. She gave a small smile and nodded. I found it very odd that she seemed bothered by a small sleepwalking incident, but didn't press it any further. Maybe she had an embarrassing memory or something, and, and as a result she was embarrassed to sleepwalk. Either way, I figured if it happened again, I just wouldn't tell her about it. I mean, I honestly didn't think it would happen the next night as well. But she never sleepwalked in the 14 years I had been with her. I figured the chances of it happening were pretty low, so I went about my day not giving it another thought. Before I knew it, it was bedtime and Jen was fast asleep. And I was asleep soon after. Sometime in the middle of the night, I was woken up again. This time it sounded like a door opening and closing. My heart raced, yet again as I rolled over to find Jen's side of the bed vacant. I rolled back out of bed and prepared to gently walk her back to bed. And this time, I kind of knew what to expect, so I wasn't quite as alarmed. As soon as I opened the bedroom door, I saw Jen. This time, however, she was standing in front of the bathroom door, which was located just five feet from our bedroom, in the hall. Her head was craned at what looked like a very painful angle, and she was staring directly at me. Now, if you walk down the hall and make a right-hand turn, there's our bathroom. Her body was facing straight towards the bathroom, and her head was turned my way. Direct 90 degree angle. Her chin was literally on top of her right shoulder. Her eyes were open so wide it looked like she had snorted a line of coke or something. Jen? I called out nervously. As soon as I said her name, she froze. Mid door stroke and all. It was so quiet you could hear a pin drop, and then her lips curled into the biggest, widest grin I had ever seen in my 30 years of life. Goosebumps immediately covered my whole arm as my heart slammed in my chest. This didn't look like Jen at all. We sat staring at each other with neither of us moving a muscle. I was too afraid to move in fear that she would come charging at me or something. And finally, after maybe a minute or so, her smile slowly faded and she got back to opening and closing the door. I quietly stepped back into the bedroom and closed the door, making sure not to make a sound. 
I got back in bed, but I couldn't fall asleep. I just, I just laid down listening to her opening and closing that door all damn night. Sometime right before daylight, I heard the door stop moving, followed by footsteps coming down the hall. My heart was beating a thousand beats a minute as she approached. I rolled over and pretended I was asleep. She opened the door, walked up to the bed, slowly climbed back in. I lay as still as possible, so it seemed like I was asleep. After maybe 15 minutes, I heard her begin to snore, and that's when my heart finally slowed down to just a normal pace. The sound of our alarms blaring startled me as I must have dozed off for a short while. The night's events freshened my mind as I groggily got out of bed and got ready for work. Before I walked out the door, Jen woke up and gave me a kiss goodbye. I acted as if nothing had happened not knowing how to approach the subject. I figured I'd maybe talk to her when I got home or something, but but for now, I, I needed to just get out and be myself and get my thoughts together. Work dragged ass because I was, I was tog-ass tired. I was halfway relieved, but halfway nervous as the workday came to an end. I calmed down a little by telling myself that tonight would be different. Tonight she wouldn't sleepwalk and everything would be okay. As I pulled into the driveway, another wave of nervousness washed over me. This is your wife, damn it. Just talk to her, I whispered to myself. A little pep talk. I forced myself out of my truck and I walked up the stairs to my front door. I opened the door and was greeted by Jen's horrible taste of hip-hop music. All my worry washed away as I heard her singing loudly from the shower. I chuckled as I set my lunch pail down and walked into my room to sit down and relax. As I sat there, I debated with myself if I should talk to Jen about her sleepwalking or just let it go. Well, tonight was different. After all, she didn't try to hurt me or anything. It just, it just scared the living piss out of me. Eventually, I decided against talking to her, telling myself that if it happened again or got worse, I would talk to her then. Satisfied with my decision, I closed my eyes and soon after fell asleep. I woke up hours later as it was dark outside. I jumped as a loud thump at my door startled me. I looked up and I nearly shit my pants. Jen was standing with her back to me, stiff as ever, opening and closing our bedroom door. Once again, my heart started racing wildly as I attempted to stay still as possible. Moving my head slowly, I looked over at the clock. 6.23 p.m. Why the hell is she doing this awake? I thought to myself as the door slammed in the background. Right next to the clock was a piece of paper that caught my attention as it wasn't there before. I slowly reached over and grabbed the paper, noticing writing on it. Babe, I'm taking a quick nap. Dinner is in the fridge. Wake me when you wake up. Love you. Fuck, I thought to myself. I was too busy reading to notice how quiet the room had gotten. My heart started beating even faster as I slowly looked to where Jen was standing. I froze as I saw her. She was turning around slightly, her neck doing most of the turning, and she had those damn wild eyes and giant grin that she had the night before. We stared at each other again for what, what felt like an eternity before out of nowhere she turned and booked it down the hall, her steps thundering through the house as she raced into what sounded like the kitchen. I heard a drawer slam open and silverware being tossed around. Instinctively, I jumped out of bed and I ran straight for the bathroom, shutting and locking the door behind me. As soon as I turned the lock, I heard her footsteps booming back towards the hallway in the bedroom. She stopped just a few feet away as she reached the entrance to the bedroom. I quietly climbed into the bathtub and closed the curtain behind me. Afraid that she would hear me. I almost jumped out of my skin as the footsteps started thundering through the house again. She ran through the house like that for over an hour before her booming footsteps finally stopped. I climbed out of the bathtub. I put my ear to the door and listened closely. I breathed a huge sigh relief as I heard as I heard soft snoring coming from the living room this is my chance I opened the bathroom door as quietly as I could tiptoeing through the living room and I looked over at Jen sleeping on the couch on the ground next to her was the biggest kitchen knife that we owned I walked to the door I put on my shoes I grabbed the car keys as well I slipped out the door and ran to my truck starting it and peeling out as fast as I could. 
I decided to check into a hotel for the night and try and think of what to do next. So here I am. Holed up in a cheap motel. Jen texted me like 10 times, called me even more. I'm ignoring her attempts to reach me. I, f I feel horrible. This is my wife. And I'm afraid to death of her. She keeps begging me through text to come home or at least to respond. And I'm on here to see if, if anyone has ever experienced anything like this before. And if so, did it stop? Please, any advice would be appreciated. I'll be sure to update if I get a handle on this or if it gets worse. If you don't hear from me, well, then I, I guess it's safe to assume that she killed me. Wish me luck, everyone. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thank you for watching or listening to tonight's video or tonight's episode of the podcast. Please subscribe on YouTube if you'd like to get more videos from me, or subscribe on Spotify if you'd like to get more podcasts from uh, me. Or if you just like listening to me in general, you can always check out audible.com. On audible.com, I've got a bunch of different audiobooks that I've worked with for these authors that you may see across the channel. Some of my personal favorites I've worked on are the ones from Vincent Venacava, as well as the ones from Gas Station Jack or Jack Townsend. You can find all those audiobooks from Vincent, as well as Tales from the Gas Station, Volume 1 and Volume 2, available on audible.com. And now, for patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, which you can always find in the link in the description, I want to give you all a very big thanks. There's many of you down there in the descriptions um, who I give big thanks to, and everybody also at this tier, like Dr. Strawberry, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Asia, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Kao, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Don Mulemeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Sinner, Optimistic Avocado, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Polson, Finley, and Sky Harbor. You guys are the MVPs and you guys keep the channel running and I honestly cannot thank you enough for all that you do. That's all for tonight, guys. Sweet dreams. <laughs>